Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint a Mediterranean seascape, the door archway overlooking the ocean. Uh, we're going to have some bougainvillea flowers over the top. Should be a really fun project. Um, figuring this is going to be a little bit more on the difficult side than we normally do, um, but uh, I'll show you step by step how to do it all the way through from start to finish. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to be man in chat for the live show, so if you're here for that, you can post questions in all caps and we'll try to answer them. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference image. I really love the, the bright colors in it. Uh, it actually kind of printed out a little more saturated than the uh, original, but... Um, I think we're going to pretty much stick to the script. I might take this tree out. We're going to get like all of this done. And then if I don't want this, we'll leave it out. Um, I'm going to move these mountains over a little bit so we can see them better and probably eliminate the ones that are behind the door there. But other than that, we're going to pretty much stick with uh, this image. So let's go over our, our uh, palette really quick. Um, okay. Unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, phthalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and carbon black. And I'm probably going to be using the fluid acrylics for the carbon black just to make that fence uh, railing a little bit easier, the iron wrought iron details a little bit easier to paint. The fluid paint will help with that. I'm um, using a uh, 8 by 10 inch Belgian linen canvas archival canvas board from Fredericks. They're our canvas sponsor. So thank you to them for providing our canvas. And our brushes today are Princeton brushes. And I'm not exactly sure which ones we're going to use. So I know we're going to start out with, um, we'll be using the number 12 bright for our background. And that's the 6100 series. And then we'll probably be using um, the number eight bright, number six bright for some of the detail work. I'm definitely going to be using an angle brush, whoops, at some point, so the quarter inch angle. And then you're gonna want uh, some sort of a stippling brush, so like a fan brush, or this is the quarter inch Willows blender that I really like. Uh, and this is the Deerfoot stippler that you've seen me use before if you've watched my other videos for my trees and things like that. Uh, and that's a about it we're probably going to need like a maybe a number two bright for some of the smaller detail work and then a number one round uh, and then for the railing I may not have the right brush out let me see I'm probably going to need a liner so we'll see which ones of these works this one's a little bit longer one uh, these are number one liner and number one round in the select line so Seems like a lot of brushes, but I'm sure we're gonna end up using most of them, so. They all have different uses. Helpful. All right, so to start out with, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna paint the blue for the, the, the sea and the sky and not worry about uh, the archway yet. So we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna let Mark dry it for us. And uh, then, yes, yes, Mark's gonna have a job today. So we're, <laughs> we're gonna, besides switching camera switches and all that kind of stuff. So I'm using a T-square to make sure that I'm getting my horizon line um, on my water straight. You always want your water line to be straight um, on the ocean. So I'm gonna go down just from halfway mark. So there's about halfway. I'm gonna come down to about three and a half from the bottom. And I'm just gonna use a watercolor pencil to go across like that to give myself a reference. We will, um, we can use this later or you can, you can tape it off later if you want to, um, to make sure that it's perfectly straight. But um, this is a Mediterranean, so the water is actually pretty bright. Like sometimes ocean water can get, you know, a little bit, uh, cloudy or kind of greenish, but this is really a pretty bright blue. So I'm going to go ahead and just use 
phthalo blue and I'm only going to cut it just a little bit with my burnt sienna to tone it down just slightly. We don't want it completely in your face bright, but um, it's pretty dark. So we'll start out with this. This may be way too dark. We'll see. We can add a little bit of white to it as we get going here. Let me go straight across that line. And like I said, you can tape that if you want to. But if I use the edge of my brush, I can get kind of a pretty good straight line with it. I got a little bit up over it over there, but that's okay. And I'm going to go just kind of fade it off that line just to soften it up so I don't have a hard edge of paint right there. I don't want a bead of paint up there. When I put my sky in, I can kind of clean that up. I'm going to grab a little bit more white and down toward the bottom I'm going to get a little bit more light colored paint, light colored water, a little bit more blue, there we go. I'm just going to go side to side and you're really not seeing a whole lot of detail with this ocean so I'm only going to do the bare minimum of uh, detail on it. I'll go ahead and let that dry a little bit. Welcome guys. If you're new to our channel, I hope you will subscribe and come back. We do these shows live twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. And I've uh, been painting for about 30 years now, I guess. So our goal is just to kind of help you if you want to learn how to paint too. You don't have to know how to draw or anything like that. I've got traceables available on Patreon, but I show you how to do some of the basic drawing in the videos, and, and if you don't want to do them, you can just use the traceable and get to the fun part, paint. <laughs> I've been not painting for about 50 years myself, <laughs> in case anybody was wondering. Mark's the, yep, the non-painter of the pair. Thanks for throwing that in there. I'm sure people were wondering. They, they were, yeah, they were wondering how long I had not been painting. So. <laughs> because it's obvious that you haven't been, right? Is it? <laughs> if you are, uh, <laughs> you're noticing I'm pulling from the corner, from the edge of the paint, and I usually pull from the same edge all the time when I'm um, doing this, and that way I can keep this back end of the paint clean. Um, it's just a good habit to get into, and then I mix my colors in a, in a separate spot on my palette. So I mixed the Thalo Blue and Ultramarine for the sky color, and adding some white here, because it's a, kind of a soft blue, it's not too dark. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush. If you're using a bigger canvas, it can be helpful to spritz it with some water. If you've got a canvas that's really heavily heavily textured, this one's pretty low texture canvas. So I can kind of get away with not watering down my canvas. But if you've got a spray bottle like this, um, you can spray before you even start painting. Just spray a couple times. It's all that you need. And it'll kind of moisten up those fibers in the canvas and help this paint go on. This first layer can kind of be a little bit dry and you'll find you you end up using more paint if the canvas is not moisturized or you know if your paints don't have enough water in them. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to this now that I got down to a little bit past the halfway mark towards the horizon and I'm just going to go below where I was just at with this lighter color, kind of blow it in some new space. And then once that paint's kind of off my brush, I'm gonna kind of go back and and move, move it up into my sky so that I get kind of a soft blend there. A little bit more white, let's do it some more. If I catch it while that paint's still wet, we can get kind of a pretty nice little blend here. Okay. And then as I get down to the horizon line, we're almost pure white. So I'm really wanting to add more and more blue. And I'm turning my brush to this side now so that I can 
I don't want to get down and touch my horizon line quite yet. There we go, starting to go over it. So and we... then turning it flat so that I can kind of work it up towards the light. So that way we get this soft gradient of color. That's nice. Thanks. This should be dry enough. Now I'm going to just set my ruler down. It dried without me drying it? How dare it? Well, that part did, at least. I'm going to set my ruler down there. And I'm just going to use it as a guide and get some more white on here. And hold my brush upright and just gently glide it right across that ruler line. And that's just a nice little trick. Way to get a perfectly straight line without really... I'm having to worry too much about the brush. Kind of seeped under a little bit right there, so I'm just kind of cleaning it up. And one thing I don't want to do at this point is this paint is starting to get tacky, so if I was to try to blend any more, like if I had an area where there was a problem, if I blended right now, it would pull up the paint, it would get mucky and like gummy, and cause us all kinds of problems. So. I definitely want to stay away from this guy area right now while it's drying. If there was an area that I wanted to continue to blend, what I could do is just do a second coat on it, repeat the whole same thing, or repeat, you know, just the section that I needed to blend using both colors uh, and blending one into another while they're wet. But wait for the background to dry completely before you try to do a second coat. Otherwise, it'll cause you all kinds of problems. Acrylics are pretty finicky about that. So I'm going to mix up some teal using green, phthalo green, phthalo blue. And I'm going to grab some white. I'm already out of white here. <laughs> Definitely going to underestimate the white. Add a little bit more blue so it's still more on the blue side. Not quite completely teal. If you have cobalt teal, you could use that. Something similar. It's a pre-mixed color, but uh, oh shoot, I just stuck my finger in that. Wow. It's not good. Rookie mistake, right? I was going to say that's kind of amateur. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth with, I switched to a little bit smaller brush. It's a number six bright. And I don't want to press down too hard. I'm getting kind of bigger lines in there than I really wanted to. I'm going to get, whoops, not ultramarine, sorry. Bella blue and a little bit of the burnt sienna over here. My color had already dried. Add a little bit of white, so this is my background blue. And just kind of go back and forth with that. Just creating some little detail lines, not a whole lot. This is all going to be pretty much covered up, so I don't even know why I'm doing that right there. The only part that's really going to show is kind of right here and above about the halfway mark. So you really don't have to worry about this part down here at all actually. But it's good practice to start there. Going to work our way up as we get up closer to the horizon line. These lines are going to be super close together, super thin. I might even need a smaller brush. This is giving me pretty big lines. Let me try this one. This is the 3 8 inch angle. Quarter inch angle would work too. There we go. Just doing some very small lines. Like I said, most of this is going to be covered up. the down part the part down below but I do want a little bit of this letter color in there just to give it a little bit of detail and I'm just using the edge of my brush pressing it flat on the can on the palette here so I get a good straight edge on that brush um, so that I can get these straight lines 
You can also get this kind of effect by using um, a rake brush or if you have one or um, the fan brush can kind of also get this kind of streaking effect. You can use it to tap in some lines, so it might tap in. There's not a lot of surf with this. It's pretty pretty calm water, so I don't want a lot of surf lines, but we could have a little bit of a little bit of texture in our waves there. As we get farther away, these are going to get closer together and smaller, thinner. And as we get down toward the bottom, they're going to get a little bit farther apart and a little bit larger. They're closer to us, so we're seeing more of it. Oops, keep adding that ultramarine. pretty good. Like I said, really the only part that's going to show is like this doorway part and then what's above the rail there. So that's pretty good. Let me grab my... Uh, let's go ahead and I'll stick with the 3 8 inch angle. You can use the quarter inch if you have it. If you don't have 3 8 inch, either one should work for this. out of my brush. I don't want to leave it in my water because it can split the wood. What happens is the water seeps up into this and through the metal and there's wood in the solid handle um, down here and it'll it'll seep into the wood and the wood will swell and split your paint. So you'll end up with brushes with split living if you leave them in the water too long which most of my brushes have split because I do that <laughs> all the time so I'm trying to be good here <laughs> hey real quick got a question yeah uh, while you have the moment yeah. uh, somebody commented earlier about how it seems like they're using like five times the paint that you use and do you do you use water or an extender or something like that I use just water but um, part of it Part of it uh, could be that you're just not moisturizing your brush enough. Like, um, I'm adding water almost every time that I go to the canvas. I'm adding just a little bit of water once you go to the, the water can there, hon. And I'm just dipping in the very tip of the brush, not all the way up to the silver part, just like halfway. And that gives me a little bit of water in my brush, keeps it moisturized, and then I'll touch it on my paper towel. Um, after I get water sometimes just in case uh, so it doesn't drip but then um, a dry brush will use more paint especially if you're trying to get kind of a smooth surface um, look it will definitely um, be more difficult so that probably is that would be my first my first uh, thing that I would look at is the water all right, so for our far mountain area there, I started using ultramarine blue, but I don't know if that's going to be the right color. I think I'm going to use purple and burnt sienna. It'll give me kind of an earthy, purpley color. And then I'll use some of the unbleached titanium here to lighten it up. And I'll have that light ultramarine blue just ultramarine blue plus white and I'll probably use uh, some of both and I may even use just a tiny bit of the yellow oxide uh, over here too with that purple it'll create a really pretty brown yeah I think those are good colors okay so got a few colors to work with here 
I'm not going to get too detailed with this, but the mountain is actually coming down off of the water just a little bit. It's a little closer to us. So we're actually seeing the, the beginning of it uh, on before. The, it's not like setting on the horizon line is what I'm saying. So it's just come down a little bit. Why don't you zoom in a little bit, hon? I may not have to have you dry if I... Whoops, look what I just did. I got that blue over here. Oh. Actually, that's my Bogan V is going to go there, so it won't be a problem. You're teasing me. I got all excited. I know. I got okay. the Pro 1500 plugged in and ready to go. <laughs> Your handy dandy hair, hair dryer? Yep. Okay. Put out some more white hair. We're already 30 minutes and it's not even, <laughs> haven't even gotten to the doorway yet. Well, it was a good water and sky tutorial. Oh, good. Good. All right, so this is that kind of lighter, um, the, really I've got all these brushes, these colors on my brush. So we started out with ultramarine blue plus white, then we added purple and burnt sienna here. And then we added some yellow oxide down here with some uh, ultramarine or uh, unbleached titanium. So we've got all these colors going on. I want it just just dark enough, light enough to be seen against this part of the water, but dark enough to be seen against the sky. So it's just kind of a little. And so I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to kind of create this sort of. Mountainy shape. It's really not particularly detailed. So far away, really can't see a whole lot about it. I added a little bit of the darker color there, but really this bottom edge is going to be almost completely straight because it's so far away and we're seeing it at such a shallow angle. Really anything that's um, you know, doesn't matter how far back my finger is here, right? Is if I'm looking at it far away, it's going to look even. So um, that's what that's the effect here. We're going. I'm sure that that mountain coastline is, you know, all kinds of uh, wavy. But because we're not looking at it straight down, we're not seeing this. You know, these different distances. All we're seeing is a straight line because it's looking. It's kind of pointing straight at us. So that's what we're going to end up doing right here at the bottom. Pretty much a straight line. Doesn't have to be perfect like the horizon line. It can be a little bit wiggly, but you know, you pretty much want to keep it at a straight angle. And I think that's about all we need to do. I'm going to use a little bit of the darker blue and go right up along the bottom edge there and kind of merge it with the C in a couple of places. Just add some shadows with the tip of the brush. It'll kind of help disappear that, that line right here a little bit into the C. It's still dark enough. Let's get a little bit of purple with it. I want it a little bit darker than my water. There we go. So it's kind of like, you're like, oh, there's something there. But you're not really seeing exactly what it is. We don't need to go into all kinds of detail. Kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. Right. Right. <laughs> That's what I think it is. You think it's Lucky? Mm -hmm. It's Nessie, I mean? Nessie. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> this is not Loki. Loki. I'm thinking of <laughs> Thor. <laughs> Hey, uh, is this one of the pictures metaphors. we took while we were on vacation in the Mediterranean? Ha, 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 ha. And where did we get this picture? This was from Shutterstock. So oh, I paid man. for the use of this photo from Shutterstock. It's a website with uh, photo 
photos that you can purchase. That's not good of a story as if we took it ourselves. True, true that. <laughs> that would have been a much, much better story, much funner uh, experience too. Okay, so I'm going to put some highlights in with the unbleached titanium. Just going to soften up any of this and add a few little highlights here and there. Some kind of, if you see any kind of obvious dots or something that kind of bugs you, it helps to kind of squint. It sounds weird, but, you know, kind of squint, look at it, leave it, come back to it, look at it a couple of times from different angles. And um, sometimes you'll see things you didn't notice the first time. Is that why you look at me like that sometimes? Yeah, I'm squinting. I'm like, I hope he, I don't know. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, huh? You're so funny. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of green here. See, just a tiny bit of green. Maybe it's picking up the water. Sky color, I don't know. All right, that's good enough. I don't really... I, I think I actually want this to be a little bit more slope, though. The picture has a little bit more of a slope on the end here, so I'm going to just kind of pull that out to more of a point right there. Now, I have a girlfriend that goes on lots of vacations and stuff. She said the Mediterranean, Her she went out on a cruise in the Mediterranean. It was her favorite cruise that they've ever been on. I can see why. It's beautiful. All right, there we go. Okay, it kind of looks like a little nothing floating there right now, but once we get everything else in, hopefully it'll make a little more sense. We'll see. All right, go ahead and zoom back out. There we go. All right, so our doorway is going to fit right about here, and it's going to take up most of this space. It's pretty low to the foreground. There's not a whole lot of space below it, so I'm going to go ahead and start there. I'm going to take that off so I can get this flat. You might need to zoom out just a little bit. Well, no, I guess that's all right. Right there is fine. So I'm going to do a... Line, start there. And I'm using a watercolor pencil. Let me see if it shows up against this. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it okay. I may have to use a darker, darker one. And then our, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start with the this part. I went ahead and drew out, the hardest part is going to be the, um, the doorway. So I went ahead and drew it out on tracing paper first because I figured I'd want to trace it on here and I don't want to have to draw the whole thing with you guys. But I did want to show you kind of how to do it uh, if you want to do it on your own. I don't know why I drew it out in pen to start with because there's a lot of mistakes. But I, <laughs> I went ahead and made a clean copy after I finished my um, initial version. So I started out here. What you're going to do is um, do three lines, one a little bit higher. So you're going to, and then this is actually the doorway. It was an, on an 8 by 10 It ended up being about a perfect inch across. So I did about four inches, four inches, and then four. Uh, four and almost four and a half in the middle. So the actual size doorway, yeah, four inches and then four and four and a half in the middle. So it's a half inch taller. Doesn't seem like the right, the same size, but it is, I guess. It's just over, moved over. And then, so I did these three lines here and then I just did a curve over the top and what I'm going to do is split this down the middle. 
So I have a crease and I'm only going to draw one side. And since this is a symmetrical um, pattern on here, uh, that will give us even sides. We'll draw one side and then we'll trace the other side. So you're going to want three lines across. These two cross pieces are a little bit closer together in the middle. So these two are about the same size. And then this one is just slightly closer together. And that'll give us our starting place for our curly cues. And this first one on the bottom here is pretty large. It's coming from about right here. Let me go ahead and do the bottom line here too. So I've got all those lines. Uh, we're going to start right about here. It doesn't go all the way to the corner. And it goes to about the halfway mark right here. And then it's going to curve around and touch up here and touch right here. So the, if we kind of mark out our points, we can sort of help guide the pen going around. And then I can just kind of smooth that out. This is what happened with my pen. I didn't, it's really hard to get this right exactly right the first time. All right, so then I'm gonna do a curly Q and just kind of get it closer these are these lines, these spaces are going to get closer together as they come toward the middle and then get farther apart as it goes around the curve there. Then there's another curly cue that comes in and curves like this. Touching that one. And then another one that comes this way and touches there. Um, that's actually Leave a little space now that I think about it. There was a little circle right here. So you can see it on this one. I left just a little bit of space. I'm not going to worry about it cleaning that up. I don't want to take forever. It took a while to draw that, but I wanted to. It. I like drawing these kind of things. They're fun. So I know it's weird. So this one uh, is about, oh, about a, a little bit more than a third. So it's not quite halfway, not quite at just a third would be up here. So it comes down a little bit past that. Circles back up and around. And I usually just kind of pick the largest one to start with, try to reference where it is and how big it is in the space. And then I can kind of work in my smaller ones from there. So this time I kind of did this one right here, comes up, touches back down and curves fills this space and just leave a little bit of room right here for this other curly Q to fit between these two and it's going to curve up like that and back around like that then this one is kind of the weird one it's got a lot of going lot going on so you want to keep this fairly shallow right here it's got a small one kind of tucked in the corner right there and then this big one right here is going to take up most of this space. And then this one's going to be in here. So if you want to draw some circles, that could help probably. I don't know why I didn't think about that before. That's a good idea. Draw that. Draw one here. And then this line is going to come close to this. Touch the edge. Curve back out. And then go on that outside of that circle there. And then just curve itself into the middle. Then this one is going to, just above it, back out like that. And like I said, if you don't want to have to draw this, you don't have to. I will have this traceable. Uh, once I finish the painting, I'll take a traceable of it. I'll, I'll trace it on the tracing paper on a fresh sheet and uh, you'll have it clean to use. This one kind of comes in, mimics this shape here just a little bit. And then all you need to do is turn it over and just trace your design and you're going to have an equal, um, perfectly measured spot there. Okay. So there's that. That's how you do that. This should be nice, well, and dry now. 
And I actually kind of like this. I don't think we need to mess with this guy. I think it's I think it's bright enough, uh, like the color on here. So we kind of got it in one try, which was surprising, but good, ha good, good happenstance. So you know what you're doing. <laughs> sometimes, hopefully. <laughs> So what I want to do is kind of figure out where I want to put the gate. Uh, this is the finished one here. And that way I can kind of leave room on either side for my um, columns. And I the columns are about a one, an inch wide. So I want to leave a little bit of space over here for this railing to go. So I might move it in just a little bit. Leave room for that. Then the other one would be here. And then plenty of room for space. Okay, I'm gonna move it just slightly this way. I think that's about right. And this is about, where did I write it down? I think I threw out my sheet with my measuring. Yeah. Nope, where is it? My measurements on a sheet and I threw it away. <laughs> okay, that wasn't smart. Four and a half inches. There we go. <laughs> well, I drew it out here and and, uh, and never mind. It's fine. So uh, if somebody's doing the gate and they don't want to do it all twirly swirly and all that stuff, yeah. Um, what other suggestions? I I thought maybe just a straight rod. I think straight iron. lines would be great. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You could even, you know, you don't have to have it a see-through door either. You could do a doorway that was um, like a wooden door. Yeah, or something. yeah, totally. That would be a lot easier for sure. Okay, so there's that, and there's another one here. Let me just make sure I'm going to have enough room for my door here. I don't want to get it too. Actually, I don't know why I didn't just do it like that. Okay, there we go. So this one's going to come over that mountain a little bit, but I don't mind that. About there. Four and a half. This is where the math comes in. Until you had to do math, but pretty much any time you're doing a doorway or any kind of architectural thing, you're gonna it, a ruler is real, real handy. Ruler will be your friend. So that should leave me enough room for my little gate to fit in there with just a little bit of space. Yep, looks like it. Yep. So at least you're using the ruler, which is a little bit more accurate than how many finger widths. And before, well, so. that is my preferred method, but you I'm, know, I'm proud of you. Huh? I'm proud You're of you. You're proud of me. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but next time you need to do it in millimeters instead of inches for the international oh, that's people. That's true. That's true. Okay, I'm going to come up just a little bit, and that'll be the bottom of my gate there. And then the actually the door. The let's see. Yeah, that comes up a little bit. Right here, so I can do that straight. This is the bottom of my railing. And I'm gonna go up just a little bit. Let's see, I didn't measure the railing, so I'm look it looks like it's about two inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one, two, that's close enough, maybe. Let's see. If my gate's right there, I'm going to go, yep, just above the bottom line. And it's about, it's really cutting off. It's leaving uh, about equal parts right here and here. I'm just looking at my picture there. Okay. That looks good. So let's see how many inches was that. It is a quarter inch from the bottom and one and a quarter from the top. So it's just about, not quite two inches. 
And back here, it's going to actually be smaller because they're going to be farther away. So they'll be shorter and closer together. So there's going to be a little railing here, a little bit thicker one right here. And then I hope they can see this, okay? But uh, I think I'm just going to fit three of the posts in one, two, three. And here again, you could do straight lines to make it a lot easier. These are kind of uh, detailed. You can have a little square box at the top. And the space in between is about the same distance as the as the uh, squares here. So just kind of space these evenly if you can. Squares there. Square or rectangles really here below. I'm just seeing a little bit of the side of some of these. See, this is why I don't do this kind of stuff because it really drives me crazy, all this little geometry math dish maths that you have to do. I'd much rather paint flowers. Why do you have to make it so difficult? Just all the little angles and all this stuff to remember. It does look cool when you get it done though. Alright. So there's a little circle on top of the little square box. You can see, whoop. get a better picture. Here we go. Well, a little shape there, curve shape there. So I did that wrong. There, and then this kind of circular, and then it angles back out like that. I'm just going to try to get those equal shapes if if possible. They don't look great right now, but hopefully once we get them on there, they will. Uh, let's see. Okay, so then the part back here. I really should have just made a traceable for the whole thing, shouldn't I, at this point? Uh, let's see. It's about... About right here. So it's not quite as high up as this railing. It's going, you can kind of see where it's going across there. It's almost splitting these right in half. There. And then it's going just above them, but below the top part of our gate. So if we stick our gate in here. Yep, so it's right about there, a little bit, maybe a little bit higher. There we go. Like that. Okay, and then we can repeat our process. Just be a little bit smaller right here, a little railing right there, a little bit of footing for our posts. And then I'm just going to leave a little space and just mark these out. As evenly as I can without measuring, which is probably not smart, but that looks about right. going to paint these in and hope for the best. We'll, we'll see. They may not be exactly perfect, but I don't mind that. I do want to line up the bottom edge of the, all of these curves, though, so if you want to do another line, just so you kind of know where that bottom edge is, 
kind of do a circles so we know how big those are all supposed to be. That'll help us get them a little bit closer to even. Let's do that with these ones too. There we go. All right. Um, at the top of our arch here, it's kind of a straight line across and then a rounded detail. And then our gate is going to arch up and over like this. And it goes a little bit higher right here. There's a little bit of the inside that shows right here. So there's a little piece of pie that kind of fits in right here that's got some of the underside of that arch showing and then the arch goes up over it. Hopefully if we did that right, we left enough room for our gate to fit in. It looks like we did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw the rest of this in, or I'm gonna paint the rest of this in, and then we can um, transfer on our gate after we get it painted on. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and just use this brush. This is the number eight bright. My hand is covered with paint. How did I do that? Will you actually, honey, will you kind of rinse these out and give me some fresh water? Because this is all blue and I don't want to turn my fence into blue. Thank you. Okay, I won't. I shouldn't have reason to. All right, so for this patio, it's pretty much this unbleached titanium and some yellow oxide. That's going to be our two main colors. Probably use a little bit of brown in there. Um, I'm going to use some white to kind of... I've mixed the yellow oxide with the unbleached titanium. I'm using some white. I'm going to use it on this part down here that's got a lot of the sun hitting it. I want to cover up all that blue too, so it may take a couple of coats, especially if you're using like a, a craft acrylic. You may want to paint around the ocean. Um, the reason I didn't do that um, is just because it's hard to get kind of these really organic straight lines like this if you're trying to fit them in, you know, in a little section. You end up kind of having this weird halo effect. Uh, it just doesn't look the same as if you've done, you know, these long sweeping brush strokes and not had to worry about stop, 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 you know, fit it, fit, fit. And then, of course, we've got all this area back here that's peeking through the railing, which so it just didn't make sense to try to paint around it. Much faster just to paint it and work around it as we go. So here's our railing. And here again, trying to use the edge of my brush to get a straight line. There's a little bit of this showing through right here. I actually kind of switched the angle a little bit so that uh, we were looking at it more straight on. Because I liked the... I didn't like this peeking through. So we're getting rid of all of that. And we're looking at it more straight on. So it's not going to be exactly like the picture, but it's close. Not worried too much about our highlights or shadows right now. Um, I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of the brown, burnt umber, here and add a little bit of it down here. This area is going to be a little bit darker, but I 
it's not going to cover as well as the white, so I'm just going to kind of let let it set there for a minute and come back to it. I'm going to grab some more yellow oxide here, and I'm going to use it on this section that's a little bit darker. And then it's also similar color right here, so I'll go ahead and use it here. I'm using that edge of my brush to get a straight line. I'm going to use a little bit of it right here. If you get a little bit on your blue like that, it's just going to always on the back end of my brush there. Uh, you can just use a paper towel to kind of gently wipe that off. Just make sure your blue is dry before you try to erase anything if you have an accident. And let's go ahead and use some of this yellow oxide on our gate. This is kind of stucco, so it's Kind of rounded edges, doesn't have to be super precise. I'm going to come just on the inside of the gate part just a little bit to give myself a little bit more room between the border of this and the gate too. You see how that's breaking up right there? Just need a little bit of water on my brush, and that will keep that from happening. And so what happens usually is, you know, my paint will go on more smoothly. But that's pretty normal when you first put on your, um, you know, your color. You'll see a lot of that. So with heavy body acrylics, it's more common if you're using a, a thinner paint. Um, and why thinner, I mean, you know, a little, oh, thank you, hon. Um, more fluid paint, you'll get a smoother line, depending on what you're painting on. You know, rough texture surface, you're just going to deal with texture. It doesn't matter how smooth your paint is, it's going to have some of that in there. So... Just know that and take your time. You can always put more coats on later. It may take two or three coats to get solid coverage with a uh, less um, lesser quality paint, I guess I should say. I don't know what word I'm trying to say there. Um, Not like a professional series, but more like a student series. Yeah, like a student quality paint. All right, so now I'm mi mixing yellow oxide with burnt umber. And I'm going to use a little bit of that. Actually, I may have to... I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's see... about right. We'll get the half inch or the quarter inch flat here. So give you some of this darker color here. I'm going to go ahead and give this a second coat. And here. Uh, 
Got a little bit of light color, but then there's Kind of a shadow on the bottom of this here so I'm gonna do a little bit darker right there that first coat is just kind of to cover that blue now we're kind of getting some detail in there and then grab that white do a bright highlight across the top And then we'll do a brighter kind of highlight-ish on here. Doesn't have to be pure white, but just a little bit brighter. Like that. And then I want to get a little bit of the burnt or uh, unbleached titanium. I'm just holding my brush kind of at an angle here or kind of at a almost flat to the canvas. I'm going to wipe most of it off so I want to create those kind of broken lines like we were having before. I'm just going to use that corner of the brush and just kind of gently graze it along that edge and it'll get that kind of broken stucco texture. Right there. some burnt umber. I'm going to actually mix some of the burnt umber with the ultramarine blue to make that kind of gray color that I like so much. I'm going to use that down here in this crack where it's really dark. It's a dark shadow right here. We got a zoom request. All right. Dark line there. And I'm going to use it, cut it a little bit with that discolor, but I'm going to use it along the bottom here. I'm just going to tap. go by tapping it I won't it won't I don't know it won't be as like perfect I kind of want to keep this slightly not impressionist but you know, slightly less perfectly detailed that'll give us a little bit more room for I don't know that painterly feel that I like to do with my paintings so I'm gonna do kind of a diagonal line in the concrete here with this color as well my brush to or my finger to kind of blend that out and we'll we'll fix that in a minute we'll be adding other stuff to it but that's good for now and then I want to add some of this color to this and kind of blend up over the top of this edge kind of blend that edge out a little bit transition between those two colors hold it on its side and use the corner to kind of create some light texture. Grab some of the lighter color. is starting to dry so it's starting to get sticky right there so I need to stop messing with it let it dry completely I'm gonna get some of this darker darker color and go in right here above the above it give it some shadow right there on that ledge part and then some shadow up here 
top of the rail. And then this part is going to be lighter. It's kind of almost the opposite of what we did over here in the shadows. The top part is getting is getting less light than this part facing us. too far away from this mix before I do this part because I want them to match. So I'm going to do my little arch detail on top of that. There. It's really kind of right in the middle it looks like. It's a little bit, a little bit off center, a little bit off toward the back, the outside edge maybe, try to get them the same size. You know what, I don't want to do much more detail though, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably want to do my bougainvillea. too much before I do my whole lot of detail on here. I want to get my bougainvillea in here. I don't know why I wasn't thinking of doing that. So I'm going to use the green, phthalo green, some yellow oxide. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna or burnt umber here and some of the carbon black. And I'm going to go in here and do some lines. This is all going to be kind of a jumble of lines and vines. Not a lot of this is going to show, but I just want some kind of backbone there. Some of it showing underneath there. I don't know why I painted all of that before I did this. I'm not happy with myself right now. It's all right. That was dumb. It's okay. Fortunately, we didn't get too far. You painted the foreground before the background. Well, it's it's kind of weird on this one because some of the some of the flowers are coming over the top, so some of it is fine. But I do need to get these kind of the greenery in for sure first, and then I can do the flowers later. But I need to kind of get this part in because it's sort of the main bones of our plant. And if any of it shows through, you know, we just want it to be behind all of this. So I don't want it, I'm gonna have to go right up against the, right up against that railing. If you get anything over it, that's fine. We can, I probably am going to get in, get some paint over it. So I'll just, clean it up when that happens. All right, so that's good enough for the vines. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber and yellow, other little uh, unbleached titanium. I always have the hardest time to remember that word. Unbleached titanium. And get some Highlights in on some of these. Just a few, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's one that's kind of pretty big right here, so I'm going to go ahead and try to make sure that's visible. Then I'm going to use this yellow green and I'm going to add some purple to it to darken it up so we've got some really dark areas in our greenery and I'm going to use it to tap 
and some greenery. And I think I might just use my brush instead of my um, instead of my Deerfoot stippler for this. I think it just might give me the better the effect that I'm looking for more than. So while I was out, you painted in the wall and the railings. Right. So I missed. Is everything, the wall and the railing and the columns, everything, are they all the same color or are they two different colors? They were different colors. Okay. Yeah. Too bad you missed it because I'm not going to tell you. Okay, well, I was trying to make it look like me, but there was a... <laughs> that, that, that there's a fan who was asking. So, oh, okay. All right. No, since you're going to keep Not it yourself. Not for you, but I'll, for the fans, I'll let them know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I see how you do it. Is me. yellow oxide and um, unbleached titanium, some white, and some burnt umber. And a little bit of ultramarine blue with the burnt umber down here in this gray part here. So I'm going to, I'm going pretty close to the edge of that. There's really no blue peeking through right in there until like there's a few spots up closer but like right in here it's pretty dense so I'm just going to go ahead and right up next to it. Most of this is kind of husbandy dense. right up in there then. Dense. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> you didn't have to agree. <laughs> Oh no, honey. You're not dense. That's not. <laughs> I don't I don't believe you now. <laughs> Oops. All right, so as I get up here, I can get all kinds of different. I like using these for foliage, these kind of angle brushes cuz you can get all kinds of different um, size dots. So I can if I point point it straight down at the canvas, I can get a circular dot. If I do it at a little bit of an angle, I can get kind of a leaf shape, like a triangle. And if I do it like this, I can get more of a straight line or, you know, if I kind of co combine them. So I can just sort of dab it. And as I do, I'm turning my brush side to side and sometimes I'm pressing down harder and sometimes I'm only barely touching it. And that way I can get all these kind of really natural looking leaf shapes and just make sure that you're twisting it side to side. And you can get all these kind of really interesting shapes happening pretty easily. And it, plus it's fun. So that's all as a bonus. Grabbing some more of that purple. There's a really dark area right up in here. It's almost solid right here above the arch. And as it comes down around, it kind of does this curve here. So I am going to kind of pull out this this texture a little bit uh, more like so. Maybe it's like kind of trailing down this way a little bit more. So maybe give it a little bit more fullness than our reference image. Just a little bit. I think that might keep us from having to put our tree in here if we kind of fill in more with this bogan via and kind of pull it over into this empty space a little bit i think it'll be pretty so we'll just kind of pull it out this way and down a little bit have another section right there and then another kind of section right there so we'll have a little bit more happening and I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill in with this green. It's actually right over the top of that arch there. So actually all of this, there's really no blue showing through much anywhere on here. The blue kind of starts peeking through a little bit as you get away from the really heavy, heavy foliage that's setting on top of the gate. It's kind of compacting down where it's sitting on that gate. Okay, there we go. And I don't need to have the, the whole thing filled in because we're going to 
fill in with some of our flowers too so we don't have to do the whole thing right now and I'm gonna go ahead and peek some of this down through this side of the gate it's gonna come up through the underneath and down this way too this be beautiful just to walk through this and see this this would be I don't know this is just so pretty We had bougainvillea growing up uh, in the desert where, you know, I grew up in the Palm Springs area and it, there, there was bougainvillea in, in, our, in our yard. It's gorgeous in the springtime. Or maybe, I can't remember, maybe it bloomed in the summer. I'm sure somebody knows. All right, so there we go. Now we've got that on there. And most of the the rest of the pink and stuff is gonna is gonna be over the top. So I have a little bit, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna grab some quinacridone magenta. Mix it with some of the purple. Grab a little bit of that green, maybe. Make a really deep curl color. And use it, some of it is in some of our shadows. So I'm just going to say it. It does look like a hot mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're officially in the hot mess stage. Is that what yeah. you're calling it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good to know. Good to know. Well, hopefully we'll pull it out at, at the end. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how good you are. Okay. <laughs> this would not be the time to fail live. <laughs> during the show. <laughs> Wouldn't be the time to forget how to paint. Right. <laughs> I'm going to add some white to this. And if you, with the lighter purpley pink. Mostly just in these areas where I know it's going to be kind of behind my gate. I want to get that in first so I don't have to mess with it later. It's going to be a pain to have to paint around it, so I don't want it to paint around our gate, that's for sure. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I like it. Use some of these darker colors in our Shadows in here. I'm just going to use what's left in my brush here and just tap off. Get some of these areas in. First coat. We're definitely going to need a couple of coats of that pink to get that really vibrant color anyways because it's covering up that blue it's turning kind of purpley color so if we want that really vivid pink color like we do we're going to have to give it some lighter pink underneath to start with it's pretty so I might even I don't know. I might even exaggerate that even more, but we'll see. It might be enough. All right, so back to our fence and things. I 
gonna use this angle brush for this part here on this arch. this ultramarine blue gray color here. It's a burnt umber and so it's got a little bit of that blue in it. It just kind of toned down that yellow slightly. Gives it a good shadow color. And we're going to go from right here up. Most of this on this side, well, I can't even tell what this looks like on this side because the reference photo is covering it up. So we're going to put it in, but we're going to go back over with a bunch of this flowers and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put that shadow in there on this side. Over the top. And then I'm going to hold this at an angle. And if it's not, I don't know, I'm not happy with that, I'm going to try it with this credit card. We'll see if we can get the credit card thing to work with this. So I'm going to grab, scoop up a little bit of this color and a little bit of my unbleached titanium. And both on here and just kind of, yeah, that's going to be better. This is just a piece of credit card or gift card that I've kind of cut. Maybe we can sell those for like $20 a piece. Yeah, I'm sure if somebody's thought of that already, there's probably. Hmm. <laughs> pink, pink cards. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Artist approved. Right. <laughs> We're kind of like, you know, sometimes when they sign bills and laws into effect and they use like 50 pens. We can, mm -hmm. we can have you use like 40, 50 different pieces of plastic and then we'll sell those to people. <laughs> Used by Angela on air. Ah, uh -huh. nice. Let's see, collector's item. Who knows, maybe we'll... L limited edition. I doubt if anybody cares, honey. Limited edition. <laughs> see, they'll pay big money for that. <laughs> you just don't want to have to go back to work on Monday is what I'm hearing. Maybe. <laughs> Way too messy for right there. I have to use a brush right there, but that's that's working pretty pretty good. I like that kind of rough texture. Um, you can use a brush if you don't want it that heavily heavily textured, but use a little bit of the darker color. So using both the light and the dark kind of give us a little bit of contrast in our. Trying to keep them all going in the same direction, but these ones don't want to get close to the edge there. So I'm just turning it a little bit, pulling it this way. Key is not getting it too thick too quickly because this area right here is pretty thick. It's not going to dry very quickly. So I may end up having to have Mark dry it for me. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this texture to scrape it off on this part. Get it off there. It's looking good. I like it. So this is also good because we don't have to worry about getting that perfectly painted in. We don't have to do a second coat on here. We can just kind of let this sort of cover up some of those 
spots for us. And like I said, because it's stucco, our edges aren't going to be perfectly clean anyway, so we don't have to get them smooth. It as smooth. We can kind of get them close. I can hear you over there eating. Don't, you're not hiding that from me. I'm what are trying, you eating? I'm trying to be quiet. Mm hmm. You're just making me hungry now. Doritos. It's not fair. Would you like one? Well, I can't eat and talk. If I have one, will you talk for me? Yeah, be kind of like a ventriloquist. Okay, you do you do the voiceover for me? Oh, you know I can do that. <laughs> okay, I'm squirting out some more white paint. <laughs> I don't have the chips, though. Take this, this and scrape it. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to bring you some. <laughs> can you tell we haven't had lunch? <laughs> You have to mute my mic or else everybody's going to hear me jump in. Or is that part of the fun? I'll turn it down just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm doing some scrapey forth and back action here. I can't paint and chew at the same time apparently, but that's okay. I'm scraping up some more white paint. Slathering it on there. It's nice and slow. Slow-mo. And turn... And go the other direction. Just gently light smearing. Give you that plastery effect. Oh, dipping it in some dark color there. Mixing it in with the lighter colors. Swirling it around. Burnt umber. That was voiceover. That was my voiceover. Ornaments. Burn <laughs> Burnt umber. Exactly. <laughs> This is probably really unprofessional. Sorry, guys. Hey, we need it. We maybe pick up another sponsor here. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt Doritos is watching the paint channel. You never know. They sent Lou a ginormous Dorito. What? They sent Lou a ginormous Dorito that he <laughs> unboxed. Did they really? Oh, yeah. The thing was... Wow. It was probably at least a foot across wow. at each point. I added yellow oxide to the burnt umber here. I like it. It's looking cool. That's what I said. You did? Yeah. You said it was looking cool? No, I said you mix something with another paint and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Okay. I was going to say, because if you said I was looking cool, I missed that part. You're looking cool. I am. Okay. Thank you, hon. All right. So let's use a little bit of it down here. And now we're both quiet. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, sorry. I'm just thinking about. So, hey, if you're coming in late, welcome. Glad to have you with us today. And if you're we're new. Just being silly and having fun. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, this isn't normal, but we're not normal either, so that's all right. <laughs> well, I can <laughs> eat my other chip. Yeah. Or your taco. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> you can hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And you can check out all 200 plus, almost 300 videos of Angela's, all different levels of uh, experience from beginner to advanced, uh, like 98% flowers and 2% other subjects. <laughs> Even if it's not supposed to have a flower in it, somehow she works a flower into it. Yeah. But yeah. What's the point if you're not going to have flowers? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Flowers make everything better. 
<laughs> that should be my pu- my motto for our channel. And that's why there's Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> did I get flowers for Valentine's Day? No. Well, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I made you order the online flowers that were horrible. You got two flower sets did, of flowers. I did end up getting two sets of flowers. For the first set it was awful. Yeah, I don't think we'll have them as a sponsor. No, we won't be ordering our flowers online anymore. Just saying. Alright, so this is basically the same color as I did before. It's the ultramarine blue plus um, burnt umber. It's got a little bit of the yellow oxide in it. It's just pretty much all the colors we've been using. Just a little bit darker version. I'm going to go ahead and put some of it on our post here. I just want to bridge that transition between these a little bit. There's some of this color down on the inside of our gate right here. So I'm just going to tap it all the way down. It's kind of rounded right there. And same for this side, it's kind of, if I turn it, then I can get my cleaner line on the inside of the doorway where I want it. And I'm really just tapping, I'm not sliding it like I would if I, if I wanted a really solid straight line, I would slide it, but because I really don't care, I'm tapping it. It like you just don't care. So I think I think we need to add uh, chips. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was good. Couldn't resist. We need to add chips to the to the su- supply list down below. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in your Amazon store. <laughs> These are critical. She prefers the Doritos. Nacho cheese. Nacho cheese. This is a straight up original. Old school. So I don't know why they messed with a good thing. What's the blue one? The blue bag? Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch. That's not too bad. Sometimes we do Cool Ranch. Got the ultramarine blue here. Just tapping a little bit more shadow right on the bottom of that. See now just that shadow automatically kind of pushes it back from this foreground here and makes it look a little bit farther away. I don't know, it's weird how that works, but that's the shadow for you. Um, and then there's some shadow underneath the gate, so I'm going to put some shadow in this doorway here. I'm going to actually bring this doorway up just a little bit. So between these arches, there's some kind of shadowy color right there. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of this dark color. Up here I'm just going to kind of pull this way so it kind of streaks a little bit. There is a, there's some detail on this inner arch, but I'm not going to worry about doing the lines and stuff. I don't want to mess with that. So. Just getting some shadow up under there. And then what we'll do is highlight the... part a little bit. Let me grab some yellow. With our unbleached titanium. I have a little bit of that shadow color, but not a lot. And I'm going to go this way. And just shadow right up underneath where that arch is. Grab 
grab some lighter color and just, just put a line there. There we go. Umber and yellow oxide. Of breaking it up with that color, giving a little bit of texture. Let's go ahead and do the same on the top of there. There is a kind of a hard shadow that falls right here, so I'm just going to use thin down paint for that. water down so you can still see the the texture underneath but it shadows that just doing a thin wash of paint and then there's another line here you really want this paint underneath to be dry before you do this but kind of rushing it a little bit. Cat wants attention over there. She's getting up on Mark's lap. Okay, so that whole side is in shadow there. Good. I'm kind of rushing through that, but let's do a little bit of it under here, too. Every time I look at her, turn it up. It's doing it. She knows you want her to now. She just won't do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got some white here, and I'm going to do a white highlight along this edge here. Just a little bit brighter. There, and a little bit right down here. Just before that shadow line there. Closer. Let's put some detail down in here. So I'm going to use the credit card again, I think. I'm just going to get a little bit of all these colors and drag it. should be using the bigger one. Where is there it is. There we go. 
little bit easier to hold if you have a little longer spot on it. So I'm just going to get some texture on this foreground. Just kind of scraping up a bead along that edge so you don't have too much paint on here at any one time. If you have too much paint, it'll just go on a solid color, and that's not the point. We want it to catch on these cracks in our canvas, or the texture of our canvas. titanium with that brown and just gonna clean back up that line there tap back over it tap back over here if I need to you can go along this edge and maybe darken it up just a little bit but starting to get there I think pretty close I'm going to go ahead and grab that green and go right up against that edge because I can see where. Need some more detail. And I need to push this corner back here, so I'm going to darken up that little section right there with some burnt umber. some yellow with my unbleached titanium there and I'm going to go along the top edge and just pull down a little bit of a highlight there a little bit right there it's not quite as dark as I had it there but I just want to leave that dark area right up against that fence gate or section I'm going to put a little bit of this in this area too. Get some highlights on even in our shadow area. There's some areas that are raised up a little bit. using this to kind of soften up any areas that are sticking out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm 
This totally could have been a two part. I thought about it. I knew it was going to be pretty long. So what, we're an hour and a half? Oh, we're not. We're not long. You're nowhere close to your record, so. True. True. All right, I'm going to use white here. And I'm just going to start putting in these little fence things here. So I'm just going to use the width of my brush as my measurement. Press it flat there. have more food so I'm I'm okay. <laughs> you've you've been prepared you prepared yourself for the Yeah, I got a survival kit. The paint apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> paint them get in. <laughs> That's gonna have to be our new <laughs> when so it's next, a long one. Yeah, next time the three hour one. Paint Mageddon. Your Patreon show is going to be that. Mm. So yeah, let's talk about Patreon. Okay. So uh, one dollar a month. Yes. Donations to Patreon. Links down below. Right. That gets you access to all of her traceables that she's done since February 2017, yes. and unlimited downloads of those uh, traceables. Yes. Then there's a five dollar level that gives you those traceables, plus also access to a monthly bonus video. And images of all the finished paintings and I, references. I always forget that. And is it next? For me, that would be the clincher because, so I mean, you know. You get the high quality res images. Right. You get the finished paintings in a high quality, mm -hmm. high, high resolution file. And the next bonus video is next Sunday? Yes, it is. The 15th. 15th, yeah. Okay. What are we, or sorry, we, what are you painting? It's over there. You can grab it. If you want. It's actually part two of the series. Oh, that's right. We started part one last month, and we'll be finishing it up this month. So we got it this far. <laughs> got another two and a half hours or so. This is two and a half hours, so we'll probably, it'll be a five hour one before we're done. We're going to put lots of detail into the leaf. Uh, these are pretty much done, so we're just going to finish filling out all of that. And then I'm not sure. I like the pink in the background, so we may just leave that. But, yeah, yeah. that'll be – I'm excited to finish that. And then the $10 level gives you the traceables, the bonus video, the high-resolution photos, and access to a private Facebook group where right. – you get to vote and give your opinions on what we'll be doing and painting. Mm -hmm. And also there's an additional monthly challenge where you're doing another painting. It's over over the four weeks each month. Yeah, we just started on it. We're doing this. So we're doing the... So we'll have... I do about an hour chat every week in that group. And we paint a challenge image, whatever it is we decide to paint. We've done some fun stuff last month. What did we do last month? I can't remember. Maybe the cherry you the, tree? You did the storm clouds, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Grab that. I will. Hey, while I'm doing that, uh, viewer... So these are a little bit bigger on this side, so I need to make these a little bit bigger, but go ahead. What? A viewer would like to know what is the difference between zinc white and titanium white, and can they be used interchangeably uh not really no the zinc white is transparent so it won't cover as well as the titanium white um and if you're doing clouds and things uh the zinc white is really pretty um important uh because you can get titanium white sort of uh tran transparent but not really much there's our project from last month in the Facebook group. So those are kind of things we do. We do long version videos um, of things that uh, take a long time um, to do that I can't do on Facebook, that I don't even want to do on the bonus videos. The bonus videos are usually three hours, three and a half hours-ish. The, the Facebook group 
paintings are usually five hours or so because we've got longer amount of time to work on them for four to five hours so we can do more detailed stuff plus it's a smaller group and those chats I actually see the chat live while I'm painting so um, they can ask questions and interact it's a little bit more intimate and the big bonus sitting. is there's I'm usually only about 20 of us at a time in there while I'm painting so you know we've got several hundred in that group but at the live shows are really small usually because yep. we're doing it on a weekday and the biggest bonus is I'm not there right you don't have to be there so Mark's at work <laughs> bonus for who for you <laughs> for them for them <laughs> oh. I, I'm sure there's people that would disagree with you there hon all right, let's. You're just fishing for compliments now. <laughs> That's all that is. All right. I am. There's shadows on these posts, so I'm trying to decide if I want to put the highlights in after. Or I think I'm going to just go ahead and paint them in white and then put the shadows in on top. I think that'll be probably easier. So. I've switched to a number one round brush. This is the 6100 series brushes. So they're obviously bigger than the number one round in this <laughs> select series by quite a bit. Paint manufacturers, even these are both Princeton brands, but each, each um, line of brush, even within companies, will have a different numbering system. So you never really can go by the number. Just do kind of a line down and then smush my brush down to get that kind of shape. This totally could be simplified by just using a straight, you know, straight lines down. You don't have to even do this shape. You could do whatever shape you wanted to, really, as long as you repeated it. not too many of them. If it was like endless, I, I might, you know, choose to simplify. It, there's not, not that many of them, so it's not too bad. How are you doing today, hon? I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. How's chat doing? They're doing good. Yeah. Do you have any interesting conversations going on today? Uh, well, we did you know, have a good exchange about chips nice. earlier. Um, you know us. We're all over the place. Yeah. 
little, very little about art and painting. <laughs> well, that's the fun of chat. You get to, you know. There's, there's a real rough time at trying to get some good jokes <laughs> for this painting. About, <laughs> yeah. about oceans. Yeah. yeah, Mona's having a hard time with her, yeah. with her <laughs> puns today. Yeah. Not a lot of punny jokes about doorways. Well, they had, you know, like the ocean, you know, s- saying something to something, and it just it said nothing, it just waved. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> All right, there we go. They got bigger as they got down to the end, so I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger over here. Even it out. These are definitely not all the same size. I can tell you that all right now. That's okay. It's all right. If we wanted it to be perfect, we'd take a photograph, right? Or hire a better contractor. (laughs) That would be the case in our house. For real. We haven't been able to close the back door since we moved in. <laughs> Take that back. I'm not. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mona wants to know how do you cut the C in half? Uh oh, I'm afraid to ask. How? With a seesaw. <laughs> So there you go. That's what you're missing out in chat. If you hit the subscribe button, jump on in. You can. <laughs> well, actually, now they they save the chat afterwards, so you know it's no longer as anonymous as it once was. It used to be what's happened in chat stayed in chat. Well, now I think you can turn that off afterwards. though. No, I, I think true. some of them are not there. But anyways. Huh? But that's not the only reason why to su- to subscribe. No. Is to check out all the awesome videos. Get notifications by clicking the bell. Not it's, there's no cowbell. It's just like a normal looking. Yeah, we haven't had any super chats bell. today. I know, no super chats. Sorry, they must not like this one as much. But that's okay. No, they it's totally fine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they went above and beyond always, the last several weeks. I so. always wonder <laughs> <laughs> when we have one where we have a lot of super chats, and then the next one doesn't have any. You're like, uh. <laughs> Did we, oh no! Here, I'll, I'll turn on the disco lights oh, just to turn you. them on. Okay, I was gonna say I hope I didn't get don't don't please no, don't no, no, do no. it. You weren't ours. I was <laughs> just joking, totally joking. Oh, okay. We had we had what was the one where we were interrupted almost the whole show? Well, last week it, went, it was pretty crazy. There was like uh, what, what what are we painting? I can't ten or eleven. Yeah. Too, uh, I don't know many, what we did last week. I've slept since then. All right, so I've made that gray. That's the ultramarine blue plus the uh, burnt umber. So I'm going to shadow this in. I'm going to shadow underneath and make sure these are dry, which they probably aren't. But it was the octopus. do it anyways. Ah, oh, the octopus. That's right. I Thank did you, get, Sin. Yes, we got a lot. Super people like the octopus. So nobody's watching it afterwards, though. This has gotten like lowest views of a Saturday in a long time. Everybody's on vacation, I think. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, we, we totally were. didn't have. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's funny. Who did it? We're from Linda. Oh, Linda. She felt bad. No. <laughs> she felt bad for me. No. I know. <laughs> There's no comment, but now now I feel bad. I do, too. I do, too. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> You're sweet, Linda. Going really dark right under there. I think I was off camera for a little while, but don't tell Mark. What? Nothing. I think when I did this last one, I was off camera a little bit, maybe. Maybe not. That'd be like the first time we've ever done that on the show. I know. It'd be so <laughs> weird. Okay, so just adding a little 
Let's do a little wonky, but that's all right. I'm not going to try to, if I was really worried about it, I would go back and, and clean them up, but I'm not going to because we're live and I don't want to, I want to actually eat lunch today sometime before five o'clock, so. Ooh, somebody's getting ready for the next series on Tuesdays yeah. and they would like Ooh, to know, Yes. are you going to do an under painting because they want to be prepared oh um okay what are we painting i can't remember the seashells sea yes i am i'm going to be painting it um probably let me think it's kind of got a thalo blue blue vibe so i'm probably going to do thalo blue underneath but probably tone it down a little bit with just you know some water so it's not like a solid dark 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 although no I'll probably go pretty dark with it so Thala Blue good question all right we'll see if she remembers Thala Blue no I'll remember okay I remember weird things like that probably good since it's my job a little bit more white right there. So we're kind of shadowing the the underside of that curve there. So like around here, around the side. And these are a little bit darker than these ones. So I want a little bit more gray on those. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in them too. Maybe take the yellow oxide and just wet it down a little bit and add a little bit of yellow glow to these. Just a little bit. Make sure they're dry before you do this. Yeah, just picking up that kind of yellow from here. I'm gonna do a little bit on these too. It's going to be picking up the yellow reflected from what's around it. White picks up the colors around it. So we're just going to use that yellow oxide since it's in so much of the foreground and stuff. It'll make them look a little less like manufactured and <clears throat> blend them in a little bit better. So there. Okay. So I think that that's good. Let's, uh, oh, we still have to do the door too. Dang it. <laughs> I keep thinking we're just about done and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Got lots more to do. Actually, the door will be go pretty fairly fast. I just have to have to trace it. All right, so the, the Quinacridone magenta is pretty much going to be our Bougainvillea flower blossom color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it since it's a transparent color. That'll help it show up against the other colors underneath because if you just put it on top it will just kind of show the colors underneath and it won't it won't be as vibrant so we can do this first and we can always kind of wash more of it on top if we need to get it even brighter but I think this is pretty good so I'm going to do some clusters of this using a little bit larger angle brush here just to kind of save me some time can still get the small tiny detail you know little dots if I just touch very lightly with it so I'm going to leave some of these little blue areas showing so I'm gonna press down some of this green here I want some of this color coming up over this just realized I did not so this is all got this we want some greenery coming down over the top green is a great color to use against a red to make a shadow so if you're always you know if you're doing a, a tree say that's green using the red color 
is good. It'll do the same thing. It's something about it neutralizes it and it deepens the color sometimes. I'm using like a oh, burnt umber color like that that's got a lot of um, red toned brown. It's really good. So in this case that green just really made that that quinacridone magenta color deep deep kind of like the purple purple with the green too same thing to so leave this dark 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 area right there I'm gonna go around it but I don't want to cover it up I want that really dark pocket of color right there bit of this color down here not a lot there's not as much of the bright back here it's a little bit more shaded oh this is already looking so pretty I love it love this part see now it's not a hot mess anymore is it honey it is not good see I knew we could do you're it. recovering well thank you We're... I knew you could do it <laughs> you did you you were worried for a while there well, but no, it's actually for the people who are new to painting and they're trying. And, you know, you've talked about it many times oh, in yeah. other videos. It's the ugly stage. It's the hot mess stage. Yep. And you get to a point, you're like, this does not look like I am not doing this right. anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's the layers. It's, it's important exactly. to put the stuff in the background. Even though you might paint over it mostly, it has to be there to give it that depth. Exactly. Yep. And so you can't just slap some pink on the front and say, oh, yeah, that looks good. Well, and I think that that's what people tend to do is they um, they see the upper layers. And so they would start with the bright pink on this instead of putting these deep, dark curl colors in that. And that's what makes their paintings look kind of flat. Because if you don't have those really rich, dark colors, you just don't get that pop of brightness when you put these brighter colors in there. It just, just doesn't work. You've been listening, honey. You have you had a whole good spiel there. I'm impressed. You were really, you've been paying attention. After t two years or so, I've picked up one you've thing. Picked up a, you picked up a couple. A couple things. Pointers. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably more like, than one. Like don't dip your paintbrush into your coffee or tea. Right. That's a no-no. Yeah. Good, th good thought. That's peeking out through right there. Wear gloves if you're using your feet to paint. <laughs> I've learned that. This, <laughs> uh, the other day you posted a picture um, in the in the Facebook group, like we were getting ready to go on air, and you had your you had your wine, you had a thing of M and M's, and then you had a rubber glove next to it, and people were like, uh, <laughs> "Mark." <laughs> <laughs> what is the club for? Things about to get crazy. Up I in thought here. that was hilarious. <laughs> that was great. I I have no idea what that glove was left over from something, probably. Oh yeah, it's from yeah. my from the tutorial that I did on your Patreon group. Yeah. That's the biggest reason to join Patreon. Is to check out my there. my row house painting. That's true. That's true. It's the mm. only place you can see Mark paint. And some uh, poor soul like, has it in their house somewhere. I think who won that? Uh, it was a guy. Um, can't remember name right off the top of my head. Um, okay, so I added a little bit of this cadmium red light now to make these the bright highlights a little bit more orangey. Just kind of make them a little bit brighter, make them pop out a little bit better. And these these blossoms are not round. They're like these kind of uh, geometric shapes almost. So we can, this is why using this brush makes sense because we can get these kind of squarish colors. And I'm gonna go on the top um, edges of some of these. It doesn't have to be done everywhere. Highlights are where you can kind of kill a painting pretty quickly if you put too much of them in there so just a little bit goes a long long way I'm 
uh, I'm doing like little clusters. You noticed kind of they're they have these little cluster groups that are happening. So I'm trying to target those and kind of highlight on the tops of them. Just a little bit, just a few little taps. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to put the tree over here. I don't think it needs it at all. Don't think it needs it. You've got the power. You can do whatever you want with your painting. You don't have to do it exactly like the reference photo. I'd say the reference photo has helped it. It's helpful to guide you, you know, especially if you're going to change an element, you know. But if you're taking out things, I do that all the time with my reference photos. Because a lot of times, you know, you've got things in the background that just don't ha add anything to your composition. And there's no reason to leave them in. So this kind of random tree out off the side just wasn't really adding anything to this conversation here we were having with this beautiful bougainvillea vine. It just would almost take away the attention from where we want it. So, we'll just take it out. I'll grab some yellow. Sorry, here. tree. You're not pretty enough to make the cut. Yep. He's gone. So, you have been eliminated. <laughs> He's in this bright yellow with the thalo green here, and I'm going to put some pops of that bright green in. Here again, a little bit goes a long way. Don't need that much. Just a few. Try not to get it on top of the dark areas too much. Going around and above them, but not covering them up. I'm just glad that other people will get it. That we have other people that are as weird as I am about this stuff. <laughs> There's nothing like this feeling of getting to this point of a painting and be like, it's working. Yay. It's like I'm so happy. <gasps> uh, okay. Sorry, I'm over it. I'm going to use some brighter. Ooh, that's really bright. I might tone that down just a little bit. Grabbing some white here with this green. Just one more layer of the bright. An unsolicited donation. <laughs> <laughs> from Sandy and she says thanks for another great tutorial Oh, you are so welcome Sandy this was fun this was one that we voted on in my Facebook group so my Facebook group voted for this one they liked it we had several different options for different landscape photos and this was the one that was people's, the people's choice definitely like how it's turning out so I'm gonna go ahead and work on the gate now and I probably Man, probably I want to dry. need you to dry that I, was gonna say, I hope that paint's dry yeah yeah go ahead and dry that for me real quick huh 
Yes, we'll do stick man. Where is he? He's over here. We'll give him some. You know, I thought about it later, and I was like, I stuck my octopus right here. He should have been attacking the boat. He should have been bringing his tentacles over the top of the boat. That would have been made a lot more sense. But, oh well. All right, so we'll do some vines on our wagon wheel here. How about that? Do some bougainvillea growing around our wagon wheel. Just give it some vines here. This is Mark's creation, as you can tell. Well, I, it's kind of a co co painting because I he starts it with Stickman, and we kind of add something to him, depending on whatever it is we're painting that week, just for fun, time filler, a little bit of silliness, break up the break up the time. That actually looks kind of pretty. Maybe we should do one like that. Do what we did. We did a wagon wheel with what did it have on it? Oh, it had it had flowers underneath, like in front of it. So this is actually kind of fun. I so wish that I had made my octopus attacking the boat. I don't know why I didn't think of that. It doesn't even look like an octopus over there. And that's a boat, not a football. So, and I have no idea what that is. No clue whatsoever. Looks like maybe a flower. There's our token bird. All right, we're done. <laughs> it's just going. I was trying to remember what that thing is right there. Do you know what that is? That's your pebble. That's right. That was the pebble. Thank you. That was going to bug me. Okay. Fits so nicely, and it's gonna be so pretty. Let's get this gate in here. Now there's a little bit of room um, above the gate, um, so we want to get it kind of square to the bottom and sides, and then the top is gonna have a little bit more room. Let's see. It's about. Right like that. Come on. Oh, don't stick. Don't stick. No, it's just me. I need to turn it over this way so I can see it better. No, it's just sticky. Paint's gonna it's gonna be sticky for a couple days until it's cured, so it's not you. It doesn't matter what you did, it was still gonna be kinda sticky. It was kinda gloopy. Yeah, it's just thick. Yep. This, uh, I'm not sure exactly how I did that. It, oh, there we go. That's why. Let me just make sure that I'm getting this square to my canvas. You've never used tra transfer paper before. There's a there's a shiny side and then a kind of a more matte side. That's the side that goes down. And I've set my tra tracing down where I want it to be, and then hold it really firmly with one hand. And slide it underneath very carefully. Don't slide it too much against the canvas, especially with these lighter colors, because that brown will, or the dark color will transfer wherever you press it. I'm gonna use my ruler. To get my straight lines here. holding a ruler and the traceable end. Just want to slide around. 
You may want to tape it down when you do this. Just saying. Okay, and then now this is where we'll be really glad we did all this work because this would be a real pain to draw. You don't want to draw something like this complicated straight onto your canvas. Just don't do it. It's going to, for one, you won't be able to erase your mistakes very easily. And if you do make mistakes and erase them, then you have a chance of wiping off your paint underneath. Um, so that's why I, would, I wouldn't ever really draw straight onto the canvas something this complicated that had you know had to be symmetrical like this just would not be smart so grab some tracing paper or print it out you can you you don't have to actually trace it I mean if you're if you're printing this out um, you know just get the size the size you want it you know print it to the size canvas you're using and and then lay it over the top of your canvas and, you know should as long as you you know cut it square and and all um, you should be able to get it on there without even actually seeing the bottom of the Did I do this one? I don't think I did this one. Maybe I did. I'm using a stylus tool too. Uh, an old ballpoint pen that's lost its ink works really well because it rolls. You just want something with a smooth tip. A pencil can poke through your paper. It can cause issues. There we go. Oh, and you can see the tracing. It's a little bit more difficult to see on the dark part. But it worked. Okay. Two and a half hours. Let's see how long we can do this. How quickly can she paint in the card cues? And I'm going to use the... I'm going to cheat and use this carbon black in the fluid acrylics. It will make this so much faster. Come on. I want to open. There we go. I guess I'll use the I'll use this one. settled because I, I gotta have a clean working space or have it too cluttered. Okay, I'm gonna have a paper towel down here. Go ahead and do the water can there, hun. So I have a clean paper towel here because when you're lining you really need to regulate that water a lot and you're going to need to wipe off your water droplets because you're going to be dipping into your water a lot more than you would with a normal um, brush. So, And you're going to end up having these water droplets that stop right there so you're going to want to wipe that off before you go to your canvas. and. Did not outline the top of the arch. That was dumb. Okay, well, I guess I can figure out where it was. Let's just do the sides first and then we'll worry about that later. I can't even see it on that side. We'll just do this side.
Does can, she know what she's doing? I can do it. We're all waiting. It was like at a golf course. The announcers are whispering. <laughs> outer edge is a little bit thick because there's like actually two lines right next to each other you can't really see them but they're there so I'm kind of thickening it up just a little bit all the way down because there's like a gate inside the gate so this attaches to the edge or there's a gate inside the frame there's a frame that matches the outside of the gate here right here about halfway longer handled one. I'm not sure if I'm liking it. We'll see. Or the longer bristles. It makes it easier to do long lines, but it's a little bit trickier to control. See how I'm angling it in the direction that I would normally draw, and I'm lifting it up a little bit so that I can have a good I want to be able to smoothly move my arm from side to side. That will give me the greatest chance of getting a good straight line there. Let's do the line up the middle. get off when I traced it. I don't understand that trace the tracing line looks off. It must have shifted a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna switch to this brush. This is the number one round. We'll see if this works better. Super Chat is brought to you by Deborah. And she says, Angela and Mark, dot, 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 dot. You are awesome. Aw. Thanks. So are you, Deborah. Thank uh, you. Yes, thank you so much. It really means a lot, all the support and love that we get. It does. It's, it makes it uh, super fun for us. I went by the post office box 
a week or so ago, there were no packages with small unmarked bills. You didn't get any birthday cards or anything? See, now, why are you shaming people? Yeah. <laughs> no. That's not why I'm doing this. That is so true. Why are you doing this? You're doing it for me, aren't you? Of this course. Is a labor of love for Mark. Cause, so I know he really loves me because he sits through these art things for hours and hours <laughs> every Saturday. <laughs> okay, I'm not happy with uh, a little bit there. This paint's gonna have some spit on it. Okay. I don't like that brush either, so let's do. Let's try this one. Three odd. It just needs to be a little bit smaller. It's just not. There's so much little curly Q details here. It's just not turning around those corners for me very good. They would like to know, could they do this door with a paint pen? Yes, that, was, that would be the easiest way to do it, for sure. For sure. I'm about, I'm about getting there myself, because it's such a small little tight area. These are... This brush had a, has a problem with the hair. I don't know if you saw that. It was splitting. So not that one. Okay, I'm down to my last liner brush here. We'll see if this one's going to do what I want it to do. Is it the little baby one? Five odd. There we go. Much better. you later. Okay. Well, it's not like people can't see it. If it's in chat, the people are going to be able to read it, honey. Okay, so... But I guess, I don't know. You want me to tell you? I can tell you. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Somebody was flirting with Mona. Ooh. And she brought Thor's wrench down upon them. Nice. Oh, Mona. <laughs> That's great. That person is now in the Netherlands with that tree. Yes, <laughs> <It> got banished. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the tree. Okay, I'm going to go back to this longer one. We'll see. I, it may be a bad idea, but we'll see. This is just, this is an artist problem. Okay, so this is the deal. I, Princeton sponsors our brushes, but I didn't order the right ones from them. And my, I'm gonna grab my, my old favorite. Sorry, Princeton. Having our old Cotman. It's just a little bit shorter. It's a little bit thinner than this one. So I need to find the right one. The 
this is the zero liner. exciting part of the video probably. This is okay. It's like I'm confused for a second where that went to. I can't see the line anymore. So this curls around this way. The the thing with liner brushes, it's so, for me, it's really subjective. It's, it's, it's one of those brushes that you really have to develop a relationship with. It sounds weird, but the longer you have one and the more you use it, the easier it'll be and the more you'll, you'll be able to predict how it's going to behave. In certain, you know, certain circumstances, and what you can do with it, how hard you can press down, how much paint to put in it, all of that stuff makes a big difference with a, with a liner brush. And if you don't trust it, it makes it a lot, the whole process a lot harder to deal with and a lot longer. Like you know, we were just having issues with these over here. Um, I'll be able to paint a lot faster with this one that I'm familiar with, comfortable with. But yeah, I definitely think that if you wanted to speed this up using a paint pen is the way to go. I probably ought to just grab it. You can, okay, I'm going to grab it because it'll just make this whole thing go faster. And do you have those in your Amazon store? I do. Nice. Link down below to Angela's Amazon store. Yes. All kinds of painting supplies and things of those are sundries. Is that the right use of that word? Various sundries. Various sundry. I don't know. I don't know either. Something like that. Some good stuff. Yeah, this is the Pigma Sakura FB pen. You might need a couple coats to get it as dark as paint. They do have acrylic paint markers that you could use instead. This is not, I'm having a hard time seeing this dark color. So these are going to be. recommend using a sharpie for this though no no just because sharpies will fade over time uh, if it's exposed to any kind of sunlight or even just I think time in general it will fade so getting a light fast pen like this these are light fast and waterproof so um, There's also the, like I said, um, oh, these pen, these pens, the Faber Castell Pit will work. 
These are both alcohol-based pens. There's also a line of uh, pens made by Molotow and um, Posca that are acrylic paint in pens. So they'll act just like a paint. It's water-based opaque paint. Um, they sometimes are a little bit more tricky to use. So you just have to kind of because because it is paint, they can kind of spit and you know have a little bit of issues. I wish I'd brought that up a little bit higher, but that's all right. Is the one that you're using a medium or thin? This is the fine. The fine. And the real reason why that you don't use the uh, the sharpie pens is because those are reserved for the master class art, like that Mark does, like stick mm -hmm. man things like that. So. Right. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend just jumping in at that level. True, true that. I know I made it look easy in that tutorial, but that just comes from years of practice. Mark's, Mark's has all kinds of helpful tips about drawing in my faith, thankful art group, too. I'm really pushing the thankful art group today, but we have been having a lot of fun in there lately. And we, he posted a stick man thinking about the octopus. And somebody said it looked like a spider. And so Mark set them straight and posted the, what a spider looks like. The stick man yeah. spider. The beginner's guide to art. Right. And I think you called it amateur. Okay, me. I'm maybe amateur artist. Guide, guide to yeah. drawing octopus and... Spiders. Spiders. Yeah. It was very helpful. A lot of people were taking notes, they said, so. Some were taking notes, and some of them, they just, they needed to get some serious help. They needed to take what? They need to get some serious help. Why? Because of some of the comments you were making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> folks in that group I have to say it's a fun fun people in there and I do Monday art chats in there too but mostly I just talk about my hair and what we ate for dinner and stuff like that there's an uh, sometimes I talk about serious stuff, but most of the time it's just answering questions and being silly. And it's about the only time to actually see you. Yeah, that's true. I'm on camera. That's the only day of the week I know I'm going to be putting on makeup. Most of the other time. Not so much. All right, and then if I really wanted to be fancy to finish it off, I could take some white, which I don't have. I'll take some unbleached titanium. And just put some little highlights here and there on it. Not not nothing super bright that you'll be like wow look at that but it'll just kind of help oh there's a gate thing lock thing right here too but oh well so like some of these down here especially have some highlighting on them the lights catching it Just kind of dry brushing some little, little bit of detail on there makes a big difference. Make it look that much more realistic. Maybe put a little bit on the inside of some of these. This is also a chance to kind of, like if you got one a little bit too thick, you can kind of disguise it a little bit with the highlight. You know, if you put it in the right spot, you can maybe make a too thick spot look a little bit thinner. Then 
is definitely tricky. This part, this part is what makes it. This part and these. So if you if you left this out and this out or change them to you know more straight circle you know circles or or not circles straight lines or something like that, um, I think you'd it'll be a thousand times easier because this was not not particularly easy. You could see that I was even kind of struggling to get the right rush for it. All right, I'm happy with that. Go ahead and zoom out there, hun. There we go. I think I want to just add a little bit more of our really ultra dark to our bushes up here. So I'm gonna grab some of this. I might even grab just a tiny bit of black with our green and purple. And I'm just going to, just since that gate is so dark, I think it might help to have some really dark up in here, just to kind of make balance it a little bit. Now that we've got all this in here, we can kind of just strategically place a few little of these dark spots here and there. Maybe even go down over the top right here. go and sign it I'm gonna sign it over here eh. now I'll sign it down here there we go okay guys Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Like it, share it with your friends. Uh, that really helps us grow our channel and let people know what we're doing. And um, also lets YouTube know that you enjoy our channel so they'll show them to you more often. Uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, you can click the bell icon by the subscribe button and it'll also give you notifications in your email of any new videos that we do. Uh, we'll be back Tuesday night. We're going to have another painting for you. We'll be doing our seashell by the seashore. No. <laughs> it goes with this week's theme, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So uh, be sure to check that out, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.